Intelligence agents have just informed me that something is coming in hot from deep space. A few hours from now an OCV fleet will arrive at my shipyard sector and try to wreck it. The OCV are your Uber Xenon. Think of Skynet mixed with the Matrix machines and then double that. Their ships outclass everything that you can field, so unless you're a crackshot ace pilot you have to play the numbers game every time. When you get this message it is time to make an assessment on what your military capabilities are. You should definitely build an orbital weapons platform. Large orbital weapons platform. It can tank enemy fire quite effectively. Large orbital weapons platform. If you already have one and your quartermaster spare lasers laying around, now is the time to strap them on it. I wouldn't use too heavy lasers on them though. Weapon platforms don't have great generators compared to most destroyers. Osprey. Small orbital weapons platform. And their shielding, while heavy, doesn't justify putting an armament worth dozens of millions on them. At least in my opinion. But they tend to have a lot of gun slots. I had good results using medium-sized corvette or light frigate lasers to also reliably hit fighters. The sheer number of guns pointing at the enemy does the trick here. Use a transporter device to get those stations geared up. Defensive platforms are treated as immobile ships. You cannot move them around, so think twice before setting them in place. You should put them between your gates to quickly destroy incoming enemy traffic, but not too close to let cap ships jump in safely if you're in sector and collisions are a thing. When the first OCV wave arrived, my game was at threat level 3, two levels for claimed sectors and one level for a past in-game day. This is still very manageable and will just spawn some corvettes and a bunch of fighters. You might already have claimed some corvettes and collected many abandoned fighters throughout the early game. If so, that's good, you're already well prepared. But you may not have had that much luck and your threat level may already be a tad higher if you claimed more sectors. In this case, do not despair, this is also manageable, but your options are probably more limited at this point. To explain I have to go back a little. Litcube's universe uses a certain weapon scaling. Mayhem adds its own twist on it and mix that up a bit, especially since the last version 2.9. Generally speaking, the heavier a laser is, the more damage it does. Well, obviously, but the cost increase in credits and the drain on the ship's weapon generator go up even more than the damage. It is more of an exponential growth, whereas the damage scaling is more linear. For example, a laser might do 50% more damage over another one, but it usually doesn't also cost 50% more in terms of credits or resources. It would actually be multiple times more expensive than the lighter laser. Same goes for its energy demand. Bigger weapons get increasingly more ineffective in both bang for the buck and for the energy drain on the ship's laser juice. That is also the reason why the heaviest lasers are often best used exclusively on large M2 destroyers. Even if most M7 frigates might also be able to equip the really heavy guns, it doesn't mean that they will be able to use them in prolonged engagements. Laser energy takes a fairly long time to recover. When it's empty and the fight isn't over yet, your ship instantly loses a large part of its firepower. On the other hand, if the ship has plenty of energy and only uses light weapons, it could dish out more damage than it currently does and you may be better off using multiple smaller ships which give you more weapon slots overall. 
In most cases you should not aim to equip the heaviest weapon that a ship can use, especially in the early game when your budget can be a bit tight. The only exception might be the really big warships that have insane amounts of laser juice. They are able of continuous fire even with the heaviest of weapons. But for fighters, corvettes and frigates, super heavy weaponry is usually not very effective. Even more important for us now is the cost scaling. Using the cheapest weapon available gives you the most bang for your buck. The rules of weapon scaling can also be translated to ships somewhat. The bigger a ship gets, the less bang for the buck it provides, especially for the number of weapon slots you get. Big ships have many advantages going for them, like being easier to handle overall and capable of emergency retreat jumping. Boron Battle Group Shark but a swarm of smaller ships built from the same resources will definitely dish out more damage than a bigger ship. So in the early game, when you are still limited by research times and resources, you should build fighters instead of corvettes. I usually try to use M3 heavy fighters for increased survivability and cargo space. Most of them can carry enough jump fuel to operate around the whole map, or at least a large part of it. But if you ever find yourself in a pinch, you have to cut some corners. A step down would be M4 interceptors. They are often the cheapest force multipliers you could get. Interceptors are very fragile, but Enemies have to hit them first, usually can't kill them fast enough and aren't able to focus their fire on individual targets. So their survivability is greater than the numbers like shield capacity would suggest. They make for an excellent early game emergency sector security. To put them to the test I held off the third OCV wave at threat level 6 only using 170 buzzard haulers. They are quick to build and really really cheap. They were able to stand their ground with 63 losses. That may sound like a bad deal, but you have to take into account that 170 buzzards only use up the resources that would be needed to build approximately 5 corvettes, and those would have never stood a chance in this situation. But since 2.9 you have to take this with a grain of salt. Things have changed quite a bit. The new version rebalanced most fighter weapons. Their cost has been equalized a bit and they have been grouped into two new tiers of Commonwealth fighter lasers. Three in a light and three in a medium category. Most of them got buffed, but they are also more expensive now. Terran weapons are different from before, generally less cost effective and they didn't get any buff, only a cost increase. With the new version there isn't any really cheap throwaway weapon. You might be better off selecting fighters with more shielding to protect your investment instead of looking where to get the most weapon slots for the least cost. Designs like the Elite or the Theseus have 5 times more shielding than the buzzard I was using. They should be better suited for these new, expensive and stronger weapons. Maybe even go for heavy fighters right away, because the upgrade from high-end interceptors to standard heavy fighters isn't that big anymore. Anyway, this new laser balance will probably change again in the future, but I think you get the idea. Smaller ships provide more bang for your buck, you could get one M6 Corvette or instead build 6 to 20 fighters for the same price. And those will have orders of magnitude more firepower. Fighters are like a Molotov cocktail. A reliable weapon of the poor. This general rule of thumb was true in Litcube and it's also true in Mayhem. Before building any ship in large quantity, it is a good idea to use Litcube's template feature. Set up a single ship exactly like you would like the others to be. 
Equip all weapons, shields and jump fuel. Set the jump drive and turret settings. A minimum jump range of 1 prevents in-system jumping and conserves some fuel. This is especially important on capships because they like to create traffic jams at the gates and can sometimes even collide with each other. Tactical jumps can still be performed manually with navigational commands. When your role model is fully set up, open the template manager in the player console. Create a new template, select your ship and name the template. For example, the ship type plus its weapons and the amount of fuel. We can now build combat-ready ships in the shipyard. You will quickly have hundreds of them in active duty. Handling such a large swarm must be fluid and efficient. The last thing we want is to micromanagement individual fighters. Just be careful that you don't build 50 ships and realize that you only had weapons for 7 of them and shields for 21. Things could get really messy at this point. A new feature of version 2.9 is the ability to order templates in the backlog menu and let new ships wait at their shipyard until all necessary equipment arrives. Then they will auto-equip it and this way you don't have to be double sure to have everything available at the shipyard before placing an order. I will cover the backlog in a later video when we are building ships more frequently. It is very user-friendly to make use of the landed or owned ships lists, which are available on any carrier or station. Here you can quickly assign home bases, fleet leaders or wing membership to an unlimited amount of units. So if you order a bunch of fighters with a template, give them a home base that has no other subordinate ships. Even a TM will do. Through owned ships you can assign all of them to a wing at once. When you are controlling a large fighter cloud, the standard wing commands tend to be ineffective. The game tries to organize them into smaller groups following Ready. various sub-wing leaders. Accepted. This process seems to struggle when there are hundreds of ships in a wing which have to attack an enemy formation. They will mess around, try to avoid each other, and most of them will be sitting ducks. The OCV went straight past them when I issued an attack order through the Wings command console. In this case, it is better to broadcast an attack order to all individual ships. To give an individual order to all ships, scroll down and open the command console for a single wing member. Select Broadcast to Wingman and then Attack All. Command accepted. Doing it this way will make them instantly pick their targets and engage. If you still think you will be heavily outgunned, you can use your stations to soak up some fire first before sending in your ships. Stations have strong shields which keep the enemy busy. Remember to retreat your dock agents if you give them access into the heart of your empire. You can handle those isolated OCV groups with much fewer forces. Solar power plant X L Eta. Logage. After the battle, some stations might have taken some damage. In Mayhem you can now order a team of marines to repair them. Command accepted. Space suit. Their skills will improve the repair speed for hull damage of varying severity.
spacesuit. The next video will cover our baptism of fire. We set up an early game attack fleet, liberate a sector in the Gonor story plot, and use this opportunity to learn more ways to control our new wing. But wings are just the first step. Mayhem's latest addition is a completely rewritten fleet system with enhanced functionality. You will be wondering why something like this has only now found its way into the game, and what Egosoft has been doing all these years. Fly safe.